I have stuff good. on like equitable we'll access one. to the internet, we'll okay. which is I thought something I didn't really think about, but it's a really good session. Access and then, the information is mm -hmm. Because you think about it's hard when this is all you have, it's hard to write a resume yeah, that's true. on that. Yeah. Um, that was interesting. And then I did um, there was one about economic mobility that was really good and maker space. <coughs> Call the meeting to order. Okay. <coughs> All seven of us are present. Item two. At the commissioner's request, discuss any item of concern on the regular session agenda of November the 21st, 2017. Anybody? Hearing none, item number three update on Crossland softball fields. Kevin, is that you? Uh, Kevin and Morali are going to update okay. where we're at, what the schedule is. Morali, I didn't recognize you. Oh. <laughs> You've grown taller. Right. right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, just wanted to get, get back to you uh, the status of uh, softball fields and Crossland Park. Um, as you know, uh, this is a multi year, multi phase project. Currently, we are building two fields. Um, following by two and parking lots and restrooms in the future. Uh, the last year, 16-17 uh, year budget was like 300,000. Um, this is the location of the uh, softball fields. Uh, where the two fields are going in currently. And this is the access route to these, these fields and uh, this will tie to the trail. And this will be another sidewalk between these two trail uh, parks. And this is what we encumbered so far. Uh, lighting, fencing, irrigation, drainage, and bleachers in the, in the last year, last budget. Yeah, many of these items have already been purchased and are waiting for installation. Um, in fact, either all of them are purchased or encumbered waiting on delivery. That's right. And you get ready to talk about yeah. the schedule, right? Yeah, this is the current schedule. Um, right now, like uh, the dirt work is go currently going on, and the lighting they are going to start uh, middle of January, and they'll be finishing sometime in uh, like uh, the towards the uh, end or beginning of June, and followed by like it will overlap with the fencing and uh, irrigation and sidewalk. Currently, tentatively, um, we'll be finishing uh, summer end of summer. July, July time frame, and this will be ready for the following uh, 2019 ball season. Morley, why don't you talk about the dirt work and the challenges we've had, how much dirt work you, you're talking about. There's a lot of dirt we got to move in there. Yes, um, the, uh, feet, uh, the natural ground is like four feet below, I mean, to the actual the finished ground. So we have to haul about almost 10,000 yards of dirt. So that's a lot of dirt that needs to be hauled in. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I think, uh, so far we hauled in about 5,000 yards. Currently, we got another uh, wor uh, contractor working on moving another 5,000 yards. So um, it's a lot of dirt moving in. That's the challenge right now. Is that going to cause water to settle somewhere where it hasn't before because you're putting in some of the dirt? <coughs> no, we got the storm drainage system that's going to carry out, so it's not going to settle. Uh, we are not going to drain into neighbor's property. Okay. Did most of that come from uh, Chestnut and Cleveland? For the Chestnut? Uh, no, it's coming uh, from Cherokee Detention over by the, the Honda place? Yes, okay. yes sir. Okay. Are you going to the retention the spring? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and explain too some of it we're doing and then some of it we have contractors lined out to do. Yeah, uh, I can, yeah. So lighting and fencing, these two are contracted out. So irrigation, drainage, and bleachers, sod. So these are all purchased items, and the city crews are going to do this work. The, the sod will be installed. Huh? by uh, contractors. <coughs> okay. But we encumbered all that and uh, worked with uh, the Sod Farm out in uh, Tulsa. 
to get all that done. That's a lot of side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but all the dirt work's got to be done before we can do anything else. Yeah. That's that's, that's, that's the <coughs> linchpin to get things going. Okay. And we think we'll have the dirt work done when? At the end of January? Or uh, yeah, middle, middle of January. Okay. Middle of January. Are there two more to be built in the future? That's right, yes. Where do they, where do they go from those two? These two right here. North we got, north. yeah, north. North. Okay. Yep. North. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now the parking he's showing on there is not budgeted currently, so that will have to be an add item at some point to add that parking. <coughs> <coughs> Just to build these two parks, typically the contractor is going to be about a million dollar project. So city crews are helping a lot to get this project moving along. I know it's going to be time constraint, but when you get there. Is the parking, when we get to it, also going to require a bunch of dirt work first, or is it already at grade? Uh, part, uh, yeah, there is no dirt work. It's pretty minor. There is no fill there. Good. Yeah, because when you see here, the entire drainage area is going to slope it down. Uh, so that's why. Um, okay. Have to bring it up. Ooh. Progress. Where, where are the tank batteries? Is it right back? The uh, yep. These are the two batteries, and this is a uh, <coughs> pump jack. You said the other two fields are going to go in just on top of those, where those two are? Yes, so it's going like to make a big circle. Okay. It'll be a fourplex. Is, is that all under grade two? Uh, this will be a minor. It's not going to be that. Okay, it's not as severe. Okay. Yeah, this is about four feet high. This might be like about 18 to 20 inches. Okay. Thanks. At some point, we'll want to come back to and build some concession stands, bathrooms. So we're thinking ahead as we lay the, there's going to be sewer pipe in there, right? Right, yep. yep. And drainage pipe. And so we're planning for that. Good, good. Well, that'll have to be a follow on item. One piece at a time. Yeah. Okay. A lot of the planning that Morello and I did was the pre planning for future stages mm -hmm. so that we don't have to go back and tear everything up. Yeah. So we're, we're doing all that preventative uh, in the planning process. Yeah. The lighting, <laughs> lighting also, like when we build these two fields, we don't have to go back and put another more poles, just add more, more fixtures to the same pole. So it'll be cheaper to light the, the two additional fields because we're. We're tying them in as if we were building the four. Gotcha. So, good. Great. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Item four update on the Willow Bridge repair and replacement. Robert. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, and Robert, I'll go ahead and kick this one off. I'd ask to bring this one back because we just talked about this probably about a month ago. And we talked about repairing the bridge, and we talked about moving forward with replacing it. We are moving forward with replacing it. Because of timing that he's going to talk to you about, it makes a lot of sense to me to just skip the repair because we've already got it closed. However, I want to come back to you and give you this updated presentation and get your thoughts and direction on that because Maybe we do want to repair it. Um, he'll talk about the timelines and, and probably if we do repair it, how long we want to leave it open and when we could start if we don't. So Robert, with that. Thank you, Gerald and Mayor and City, City Commissioners. Yes, this is uh, just an update on the uh, uh, presentation we did uh, about a month ago on the Willow Road Bridge project. Uh, again, located on Willow Road, just west of 66th Street. You can see the channel improvement on the map at this location. Pioneer School is, uh, of course, on Willow Road just to the um, uh, west. Uh, that bridge was closed in August due to uh, conditions, due to this conditions in these, uh, 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 these are actually uh, piles in here, steel piles that support the west abutment. East, abut east abutment has been inspected and found to be in, in reasonably good order, but the west abutment has deteriorated over the last, over the last year substantially. Um, and we talked about, uh, or the, we did a replacement evaluation that's been complete. Uh, we talked about doing temporary repair, repairs. That's ready to go. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and then we are under design to do a full replacement uh, because a temporary repair would be a temporary uh, repair, bring the structure back where it could be used for a period of time. Uh, but it would not. Uh, it still would have. Some, you know, eventually it's going to need replacement. 
Uh, what we pretended before with the cost estimator for a temporary repair is about 50000 and about eight weeks to get uh, the quotes and get it uh, constructed. Uh, did point out that the temporary life or the repair would have a 10 year life, but the structure, many structures, may not have a life. It's, it's, it's uh, really questionable. It has a, it would be certainly have several years of service. Um, we are under design for the full placement and we are in a $25,000 range, so we're good. Um, the construction cost for the placement is, at this point, with the, without a design, we're estimating somewhere 250 to 375,000 for placing that structure with a box culvert and 12 week, week construction time. I want to go to the quotes. This is a, the new information. We have got quotes for the temporary repair, uh, which we'll be putting at a, a steel beam across there and replacing for or file placing for uh, pilings in that uh, bridge to hold the steel beam and hold the west abutment up. Uh, three contract our three contractors have, been, have provided us quotes, and you can see K and L, K and R at uh, forty seven four fifty. They could start here in a couple of weeks in December. Same with the logo logos, they're about the same price. Deep welding does have a, um, a more competitive price twenty eight thousand two hundred five, but. They are on certain jobs and would not be available to mid-January. So the cost to uh, um, um, do a temporary repair on a bridge uh, would would be uh, would be somewhere <coughs> between within our fifty thousand dollar range, somewhere between thirty and fifty thousand, depending on the time frame. Uh, it's probably take you know it's going to take about five weeks for to do the do the repair work. Uh, so that would cover the uh, uh, temporary repair. Um, the permanent repair uh, would be, of course, would we have, we'd have to pick up some more stormwater funds to cover that cost uh, in in the range up to perhaps three hundred seventy-five thousand, and that could be uh, 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 designed underway so uh, we could be ready in eight weeks to go forward with um, bidding the uh, reconstruction. Reconstruction take about twelve weeks, uh, so. It would anticipate, it was always anticipated that it would be ready to go after uh, uh, the school system was out for the summer. That might be a good time to start the, the project and do it primarily uh, during uh, the season that the uh, uh, school system uh, uh, was not using that facility for their students or their parents. Uh, but we could, uh, I think, within uh, eight weeks have the bridge back open for temporary surface that would could be used for a number of years. Uh, or uh, go ahead and design and, and plan to sometime after uh, school's out or after harvest to go and do a 12-week construction and, and re full replacement. I think uh, this time management is looking to uh, uh, hold off on the expansion of temporary repair and go to the full replacement. That just yeah, yeah, so to maintain the bridge closed. Probably but I, was, another, another I want to come back know. and see what you guys thought. Uh, if we just uh, with Brueggemann, who's already been engaged to start yes. designing this, um, I think with our timeline, we potentially could have this bid and bring it back to council and have it awarded in the April timeframe. Is that right? Yes. Okay, and if we did, then they could potentially start yes, however soon they could start after that. Or we could wait until after the harvest season. So those are some things that, or the yeah. yeah, we'll go about two cool. months to get complete the design, be permitting and ready to go, and then two months to construct. So, yeah, December, January, February, March. Summer. Yeah, April will be about right. It'll be rough for harvest. So, that's kind of what we're trying to weigh is mm -hmm. is it worth twenty eight or 50000 even the 28000 starting mid January? Start after June. It's pretty economical if we wanted to do it. It'd take about two months. If we do a temporary repair, we're probably going to want to leave it in place until after. The harvest July or so. Let's not waste the money on a temporary repair for a couple months. Just get the. That's. I think that's, just get it done. Yeah, that's kind of my that's thought too. too. And you said the temporary repair would be for non-heavy traffic. How, how is that defined? The uh, it would bring this bridge uh, <coughs> back up to a current loading, which is 26 <coughs> tons, is the current loading, which is they're not they're posted at tw under 23 tons, so it's not a posted bridge. Uh, but it wouldn't it wouldn't carry uh, it wouldn't be designed for truck traffic, heavy truck traffic. 
Okay. Is there twenty six times would be the how much heavy moment. truck traffic is going through there now? <laughs> Do you know? I suspect uh, <coughs> um, we hope well, that none's going through there. <laughs> no, there's a possibility of zero. A lot yeah. of truck traffic. They're probably it probably is used during harvest though by uh, uh, yeah. ag use. With, with the temporary uh -huh. repair, would 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 the the harvest would they be able to use it with the equipment that they use across it? They bring it back up to its its current street twenty six times. Yes, sir. So, so yes, we would. Yes. They would be able to use it. So, this temporary would get them through harvest season. It wouldn't be, would would, would essentially help them. Yes, sir. but they're not going to have to go that far out of the way on a temporary basis. Yeah, I mean, versus this. versus permanent. Permanent to yeah. me is a lot better. Yeah, miles north, miles to south. Yes. Yeah, fifty thousand dollars is a lot for a band aid. Mm -hmm. But I think that is going to be extremely well used. Sixty-six, uh, well over the sixty-six. And the permanent they, replacement. They've got eight million dollars worth of uh, e equipment sitting out there for wind energy, <coughs> half a mile away. Well, this bridge was in one of those places where we got like you know roads dead ending anywhere around it. Then I might care more about a short term, but it's it's a it's a mile out of the way to go up to. Yeah, I mean it's it will be a it's hassle for folks, but it's not. Or yeah, it's not that big a hassle. No, I think compared to what they're going to get in the future. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean we got to replace it. I just don't think it makes sense to spend the money on the temp thing. No, me either. Yeah. Permanent replacement, of course, we designed those to carry our heavy fire truck, which is 35, 35 right. tons. So we always, always go up to that level. <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Maybe the beginning of a loop. <coughs> <coughs> Item five, present, presentation and update on state legislative business. Kurt Rogo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Just wait to heckle when you're done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything's on fire, nothing's, everything's I'm, broken, I'm nobody knows what's going heckling. on. It was a uh, short but presentation. We'll get through this. <clears throat> this has been, no doubt, an interesting interim. Uh, with special session uh, that lasted over eight weeks. Uh, I want to say it went into week nine. <laughs> Typically, uh, special sessions last one week. And a lot of the agenda is taken care of in maybe just a couple bills or a half dozen bills or less. Uh, when this special session convened, there were almost just a few shy of 200 bills filed, <laughs> which was not normal. Um, and so, and, and but typically, again, you know, I'm just going back over the, my last 20 years of experiencing the capital, state capital. Uh, usually, those bills that happen in special session are leadership bills, not <coughs> your, your uh, normal uh, legislature. <coughs> so, uh, I thought I'd start with the failed bill real quick and just give you an overview of, of the budget deal that went on. Of course, we ended up in special session because of the cigarette fee that was unconstitutional. It should have been a cigarette tax and passed by three-fourths majority and because of state question 640. But the first budget deal that came to about 10 days ago and was voted on was a cigarette tax increase or a, a, a tax at that six cent motor fuel tax. Expand the uh, receipts to low point beer on those tax collections. I, it was a fancy way for saying increase the uh, low point beer tax. And then the, the sticking point uh, was the gross production tax. And they were going to go from 2% to 4% on the first 36 months of well production. And they were going to make that permanent. And that's been a long controversy at the legislature that's been brewing. It was really getting after it last spring. And uh, as you can see here, going from 2% to 4%, the first 36 months could, would bring in 132 million over the next eight months, 430 million the next following year. It used to be 7%. And when oil and gas had hard, hard economic times, they took it down to 2% to give them a break. And then the oil industry came in just a few years ago and said, hey, let's try to make that permanent. And all of a sudden they struck a deal, I think it was about, I want to say three years ago, four years, I can't remember what year that was done. They came with up with the 2% first 36 months, and then it bounces to 7%. Given the, uh, the new technology of horizontal wells, you have a lot of 
production that happens in the first two to three years. In fact, most of the production of that well happens in the first two to three years. And so there's a big group out there, a big, lot of legislators. Uh, it's very heavily talked about in the uh, House Democrat Caucus of trying to push this back to 7%. So it's, it's been a real interesting issue to deal with that. Um, that vote failed, 71 to 27. It required a three-fourths majority. They needed, needed five more votes, and it just didn't happen. <coughs> and it was a huge disappointment. They were building up to it, and everybody thought it was, even, even I thought, well, I think they can do it. And of course, the votes were there in the Senate. They were going to deliver, and it uh, didn't happen. So that was the first one that failed. So here's what they came up with on the latest budget deal. Uh, last week, last Thursday, they, vote, they voted on this one. It was basically two bills that created the revenue to get special session over with. They dug into the rainy day fund, which is your constitutional reserve funds, 24 million. And because the, the economy is doing fairly well, they have carryover funds of 23 million that they used. And then they had, they started rating the revolving accounts again, 60 million. And that's another sticking point that's been going on the last few years is, is rating revolving accounts and we're talking about accounts that cities pay into and individuals pay into for licensing and there's several tons of those accounts across the state government and legislature when they need it they'll go in there and skim off the top what they deem surplus and uh, and borrow from the not borrow they just take the the revolving funds and then uh, agency cuts, which was another uh, sticking uh, point uh, with uh, Governor Fallon. She told the legislature, no more agency cuts. We've been cutting agencies for years. Stop. And they're operating on bare bones, uh, bare necessities. And so uh, when I put this presentation together, it was uh, <coughs> last week, Thursday, Friday, I sent it in, and then she vetoed this bill. Uh, I think it was uh, Friday. And interestingly enough on the veto, and just to give you an idea, I've got the actual bill here. And you can see that she just goes through and marks it up. These, you know, they just take a pen and they, uh, they mark it up. It's called line item veto. She vetoed every section except five. There were 170 sections and five of them survived. So she funded health care, which was the big issue. Uh, that's why the legislature had to vote on something, because the drop dead date on funding health care was December 1. And then all of a sudden, our, our senior citizens that were <coughs> potentially nursing home bound would stop receiving funds to, to stay at home uh, through Advantage Waiver. And then nursing homes would be, uh, had some funding issues as well. But um, a lot of issues were, were really brewing at that point. Um, <clears throat> so I, I wish I had more time to put a slide together, but this revolving funds right here, 60 million, I believe a mistake was made. 30 million of that was coming from the uh, County Improvement Roads and Bridges Fund. Last May, they tapped those guys for 50 million took it out of their fund. In this bill, they tapped him for 80 million, and I think they were supposed to repeal the 50, or was supposed to supersede. Whatever happened, it didn't. And so the county government folks are telling me that they just now, they're adding up 50 from last May, and this bill had 80 in it. And so now they've been hit for 130, not the 80. So, and the Department of Transportation has noted that there's been some error occur there. <coughs> now they're having to fix a $50 million problem. But this was all vetoed anyway? No. No, that no. part wasn't? No, that part wasn't. Okay. The revolving funds out of the County Improvement Roads and Bridges Program was not vetoed. Okay. Bottom line, whether it's $80 million or $130 million, County Government Roads and Bridges got hit hard. I would say they're the biggest victim of this whole uh, issue of the special session. Healthcare got taken care of. Those folks got taken care of. Uh, but roads and bridges, and we don't dig into those funds as cities, but we sure enjoy the benefits of good roads and infrastructure. As where where do those funds actually come from? 
Well, the legislature has been appropriating X amount of dollars into that fund, I believe, since 2006. I think that's when it was created. <clears throat> and and the, how, and, how was it, how was it spent, spent then? Um, I, wanna, I, I don't know the details on it other than um, it's they've created this kind of like what we have, an eight-year transportation program. Now the county roads and bridges have a, a four-year I think it's a four-year program within their system on county roads and bridges. And this all came, a, 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 um, came an issue when we had deficient bridges uh, that were, you know, what, seven years ago, we started building a big list of deficient bridges. And, uh, or maybe it was when it started. Time passes so quickly. So back in the mid-2000s there, they put this fund together to deal with those deficient bridges. And so... <clears throat> What took 10 years, over 10 years to build, is now starting to be dismantled. And it's concerning. I, you know, I, I'm putting a lot of emphasis on it uh, because we should be concerned about it. And I think OML should be concerned about it, which they already are. I've already talked to Mike Pena and he's already talked to you about it. So, um, however, so back up a little bit. Uh, Mary Fallon approved basically these top two. She vetoed basically a portion of these revolving funds and then all of the agency cuts. And she actually saved some funding for transportation. Uh, there was a fund for state transportation fund, uh, 3.6 million she saved. Highway construction maintenance she saved 3 million and the way station program she saved 2 million from, from being rated on, on those accounts. So they made it. She's calling for another special session. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> I don't know uh, if they'll try to convene maybe right after the first of the year on a special session or if they'll just push it on to regular session. Uh, but she's, she said she's going to ask for another special session. Kerr, how does that tie into the rainy day fund? How does... All those numbers you've got to... Right here's the rainy day fund right here. The 24 million? 24 million that they took. Several out. years ago, that was about 800 million and they rated it a couple of times. Yeah, they've... Down to uh, zero. Yeah, they've built it up and then they take from it. But there are rules, there are constitutional rules on how much they can take based on the needs. Before long, and that will be zero. Pardon me? Before long, that becomes zero. It could zero. be zero, yeah. Yeah. And that's a concern. Uh, we're, we gotta, we gotta, we're still in the middle of a crisis. We got a, we got a revenue issue. That's the best way to put it. Uh, we don't, and, and uh, we're, they're dealing with it as best they can. It's been handled a pretty, pretty hard situation. So here's the other, here's the other end of that uh, budget deal. They increased uh, gross production, gross production on wells currently at four percent to seven percent. This is a different issue. These are uh, dealing with a like what they call legacy wells, and it's basically expediting a certain group of wells into the seven percent category sooner. And so they were able to <laughs> squeeze out a, another forty-nine million. It's just kind of a one-time fix. Uh, but it does not adjust, adjust the tax rate. Are these uh, are those mostly? You said they get most of the production out of the wells in the early years. Yeah. So does that on the mean horizontal these ones. are about dried up, so we're going to raise it and not make much out of it anyway. Yes. That, well, uh, I don't know how long. Like uh, I'm not a geologist. I, I can't yeah. tell you how long a horizontal well lasts. But uh, the vertical well guys that operate those older wells are actually pushing for the seven percent because they're paying seven percent anyway. So there's two two different groups of oil and gas yeah. folks out there. Mm -hmm. One does not want the, the tax increase, and the other one says, no, it needs to be 7%. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting within their own ranks. Um, all right, so enough of the special session stuff. Um, kind of more bad news. Uh, this just came out. Moody's issued a credit negative warning for Oklahoma's credit rating. Uh, they said that the legislature's inability to pass comprehensive and permanent solution to uh, per permanent solution is credit negative. And of course, Standard and Poor's lowered Oklahoma's rating on general obligation bonds and appropriation debt from a double A or down to a double A from a double A plus earlier this year. Um, is that going to impact our borrowing rates on yeah. the OWRP bonds? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know where the bonding capacity lies there, but for on state bonds, for transportation, it does affect the rate, bar the state's ability to tra borrow money. On OWRB, I believe that's a city bonding capacity, I want to say. 
Well, I think it, I think it is through the state, so it, oh, okay. it probably will have some okay. kind of impact. So All our right. pipeline got more expensive I'm because the legislature couldn't get their act together? Possibly. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So um, it's just a warning. I don't think they've done it yet, but uh, Ken Miller, state treasurer, he's been warning of this for a long time because uh, we're, we're spending too much time on one-time funding and we, we need to fix the revenue issue. A um, couple points on Department of Transportation. Uh, they're asking for public comments on a state transportation improvement plan for federal fiscal years 2018 to 2021. This is just a normal <coughs> thing that they do every four years. Uh, I talk to them about it, and of course they will take comments year round. Uh, but this is just some formal paperwork that they are, are putting together. And then at the last commission meeting, uh, the commission voted to approve the CIRB, which is the County Improvement Road Bridge Program I spoke of earlier. Uh, they, they approved, I was there, they did this a couple <coughs> weeks ago. They approved construction work plan for state fiscal years 2018 through 2022. And there's the breakdown of, uh, you know, what the plan included. Uh, it's a $926 million plan. So they've, they've got a four year plan ahead of them of where they wanna go. But the legislature is picking on that number right there. And that doesn't help our, our plan. It doesn't help our, uh, our where, we, where we're trying to head here. So. I uh, thought that was interesting. It was a big deal. They, I guess they periodically review and approve this plan. And by the way, if you go to the website, transportation website, you'll see that they have their eight-year plan on there. Everything's still on schedule. I know that we have some work to be done north of end on 81. That's still on schedule within this year, I believe. So no, there, there's not any effects on plans that are happening short term. It's just that all of a sudden the eight-year plan might turn into a 7.5-year plan, or the four-year plan on this might turn into a three-and-a-half-year plan. And so uh, I, I hate to see that decay. Water Resources Board, uh, some of their big news as of lately, uh, they have a brand new section, a brand new chapter that they are adding to their rules, and it's the Aquifer Storage and Recovery <laughs> chapter. Uh, they have been working on this, uh, I believe, all this calendar year. This is uh, some initiative started by former Senator Susan Paddock in southeast Oklahoma, uh, looking at aquifer recharge, aquifer storage, new technology that would address that new issue. This is a new topic that a lot of states are now addressing in rulemaking. Um, I sent a copy of those rules to staff, and uh, they, they're going to have a Revised copy on the website December 1st, public comment period from December to January 16th, and they're going to be voting on that new chapter in the rule book February 20th. Obviously an important issue since we're 100% groundwater uh, right now. I don't know if it applies so much maybe to alluvial aquifers. It might be more on your deep water aquifers, but nevertheless, there it is. Um, Here's some silver lining. I probably need to hurry it up. Uh, October gross receipts from the Treasury uh, are up by more than 10% from the same month of the prior year. So this is based on October. It's the first time they've had a double-digit growth uh, in four years. So that's kind of a good sign. Um, I thought I had it a little different. I think I messed this up. I think I had an extra slide in there or something like that. I'll kind of buzz through this. Um, all categories are up except the corporate sales tax collections. Uh, there was a decrease there. Uh, but uh, gross income tax, personal, corporate was up 4.2%. Uh, individual income tax was up 6.5%. Uh, oh, okay, this was just two slides I put together. Um, gross production on oil and gas uh, was up 48%. That was actually pretty good news. Um, How much of that 11.8% sales tax increase uh, is the increase um, due to, like, Amazon collecting sales I don't tax? Know. Do we have any I, numbers on what that's producing? I, I don't know what month that start Did that start? March. 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 I don't know. I've not seen anything attributed to that. I did see a national story uh, on 
billions being generated across the con a country. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't know what the number is for Oklahoma. Right? Uh, I'll <clears throat> think around. Be interesting. Um, motor vehicle was up 10.2 percent. I do know that the legislature took away a sales tax exemption on used motor sales. Uh, if you go buy a, new, a used car today and go to the tag office, you're going to be paying a little bit more because an exemption was removed this last spring. So I think there could be some uh, that number attributed to that. <coughs> Questions? Um, the uh, line item veto thing, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the governor spared the developmentally disabled and the seniors <coughs> right. for how long? Is that... Is, that I think, a, is it a non-issue until next budget? I think cycle? it's a non-issue until next, next budget uh, because they, in this bill, they funded fully the Department of Health, which is another issue. There's a right. little bit of a budget or uh, bookkeeping scandal. Right. Um, <laughs> Department of Human Services was funded in okay. this bill. Okay. Uh, the health care authority was funded. She okay. kept those and she kept the funding mechanisms like the uh, the rainy day funds, the carryover, and that roads and bridges money, that controversial money. Um, so that is all good. Um, there's still about a hundred million, over a hundred million dollar hole. So, uh, but it's not healthcare related anymore. <coughs> Before last week, it was all healthcare related, but they've moved that money around now. The next you. budget has to be approved by May 31, 2018. Yeah. What? It, we only have a hundred million dollar deficit right now. Uh, down from 800. No, uh, we had a 200 million dollar hole for special session. I'm, I'm yeah. rounding to the nearest okay. 100. <laughs> million, million. 100. They had a 200 million dollar hole. Now I think they have a hundred million dollar hole. <coughs> but what they, I, what I think they will do is. Uh, go back in regular session, call a special session concurrent with regular session. Starting February the 1st. And do it like a supplemental. Uh, it's not uncommon. I remember one year when I was in the legislature, we did an $80, $80 million supplemental because not enough money came in. And uh, we, we went over budget. And so the supplementals when session starts, not uncommon. So I think that's what they will probably do. The legislature is worn out. They are they are worn so is the public. public. Yeah, yeah, and so is the public. Not particularly sympathetic. Yeah, uh, I can tell you that uh, just looking at the House Republican caucus, I, it's no telling how many times they had a caucus. I bet they had a, a dozen meetings during that eight week period, maybe more, and numerous emails. Uh, it's not that they weren't working, they were hammering it out. Um, and then the budget chairman were there every day. There's been some talk about reducing the 75 percent <coughs> requirement between the House and the Senate. Yeah, um, actually, I got it in my notes. I didn't bring that up. And a lot of this yeah. When that vote failed, yeah. there has already been some legislators <coughs> talking about filing legislation to send to a vote of the people to kind of undo a little bit of state question 640 and maybe it's bring a it not, state question don't yeah. do it at 75 percent maybe do it at 60 percent like a super majority at a, you're, at a bond you're two election. or three years away from that being implemented best case best case yeah and that vote has been a vote we've been talking about for 25 years right. ever since state question 640 came around in the early 1990s 92 i think they've been talking about this moment <coughs> we saw it where we had a budget shortfall and we couldn't pass the needed revenue and so uh 60, it happened 60 so. 40s can sit concern um real quick a landslide kurt 60 what's that 60 40 is a landslide it is 75 and state question 640 and back in the <coughs> 90s passed by i think 52 percent or 54 percent so um real quick on some dates december 8th is our first a bill deadline request date. If we have any ideas for legislation, we need to get with uh, local <laughs> legislators kind of to a request a bill. January 18th is when we'll see the bill introductions, that deadline, and that's where they unload them that week uh, prior to the 18th of January. Session will convene <coughs> the first Monday in February, February 5th, 
And then the city uh, or the, the uh, Enid Chamber of Commerce has set their Enid Day at the Capitol for February 27th. I know a lot of times city com uh, commissioners attend that. So mark your calendars for February 27th, Enid Day at the Capitol. That's it. Quick question. Yeah. How does Oklahoma generate its income? What's the well, uh, a combination of so I kind of browse through those those uh, you got uh, gross production on the oil and gas, you've got corporate income tax, you've got personal income tax. Uh, those are the big generators. Property taxes do not go to the state. Property taxes go to the county. And then you also have sales tax, which goes to the city and the state. So those are the big main generators of income. And then you have some off on the side, like school land commission, uh, different properties that the state owns. Uh, the state also owns their own mineral rights. There's, it's just a, several pages of, of different things, but those are probably some of the high points right there. Um, half the budget is spent on uh, education. Uh, the next biggest uh, piece of the pie is health care. Um, it starts, you know, just off the top of my head, that's maybe the fastest answer I can come up with right there. Do you think that if there was a population increase, uh, it would help generate revenue to the economy? Because it seems like there's a constant increase of inflation. Yeah. And those that don't have much are really feeling the burden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I'm asking is, is it because <coughs> those that have, you know, the big companies um, aren't really creating the job that would pay higher? Well, you're asking a pretty deep philosophical question, but one of the things that members of legislature have been dealing with is uh, our <coughs> revenues have been increasing, I believe, as a whole for the state along with the population. But there's this thing called dedicated revenue that the legislature has no control of, uh, over. Uh, things that are automatically dedicated to certain categories like health care, transportation. And there's several billions of dollars that I don't have off the top of my head um, that are automatically dedicated that they would like to get more control over. Uh, the state's budget is around seven billion. But in reality, the state's budget is in the teens because of the dedicated revenue that the legislature doesn't get to touch. Is in the what? Oh, what's, what's that? Tens. It's in the teens, Teen, like 13, 15 billion of a state budget uh, is what it actually is. But the legislature only gets to touch 7 billion. That's where all the fights happen. And uh, so there you have it. The reason why it's because been in business for myself right off the bat I paid 33 and one third percent mm -hmm. plus that's not even dealing with my personal right that's business you know at the end of the day last year I might have made 28 percent off my whole income mm -hmm. and I looked at it I said man I might as well just go get a job yeah you know and you're paying make an average and I'll do better. sales tax on top of right for exactly. supplies and things like that so I'm wondering <coughs> You know, it, and I've heard it once and I've heard it twice and, and more than that. Uh, the state has a revenue problem. That's, that's what it comes down to. They, the budget problem, there's efficiencies and inefficiencies throughout the budget, but they're getting smaller. All of the elephants have been found. But the revenue is the problem. And uh, these agencies are running pretty lean. How's that going to get taken care of in the next five to ten years? Mm -hmm. Well, there's another thing that's out there. There's a, the, the group of the uh, that has the seven percent wells, uh, the, what I call the vertical guys. Uh, they have launched an initiative petition to uh, collect so many signatures. They have to do it within a ninety-day period, so they have not started that clock yet. But that's going to potentially happen in maybe December, January, uh, collect signatures to take it to the ballot so the people can vote on going from 
two percent to seven percent on gross production, and uh, that may that may save the budget. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that's all put together and and where that goes. But uh, you know, there's so, so that over how many years are they anticipating to do that? How many years they're anticipating to do what? Gross production. It just go to seven percent starting year one instead of the 2%, 36 months, then, then to 7%. Which would generate how much revenue per year? Um, I don't know. We saw in there that going from 2% <coughs> to 4% generated $400 million. Great. And that's just going from 2 to 4 So um, a substantial amount of money. I suppose it's going to be some time. Yeah. <laughs> Not an easy equation to solve, but we're working on it. All right. Kind of. Any other questions? Thank you, Kurt. All right, thank you. Item six, discuss and review ordinance of the <coughs> offenses against decency and public peace. Carol, is that you? Yes, I suppose so. It, um, <laughs> with enthusiasm. Yes. Um, <coughs> we, um, this, this ordinance reduces um, some of the fines um, and take and primarily takes the imprisonment out for instance for public profanity and, and obscene gestures it can't be more than a hundred dollars but we could a hundred dollars and we could imprison them for 30 days oh thank and, goodness we don't yeah and it that doesn't seem to me so, so, so a few of these uh, fighting and quarrels and the jostling are things that um, we have in the code that people, particularly the jostling, they don't get charged with, but it's kind of a lesser included on um, battery and assault. Um, and um, Carol, it, yes. How, how much of this is mandated <laughs> by state law, and how much of this is just our idea? You mean this? <laughs> this? <laughs> okay. The. Reducing the obstructing of the streets, the jostling, the public profanity, the fighting and quarrels, that's all just local. Local. And if we don't reduce, if on the ones, um, the um, public profanity and the fighting, then if anything carries jail time, then you would have a jury trial. Now, we don't have that many cases of public profanity and, and, and fighting. But, but jury trials over, over an obscene gesture seems to me to be um, well, ill-advised. <clears throat> okay, so none of this really has anything to do with sta um, state law other than state law has now said that all, um, uh, all offenses against decency and morality um, which, if we don't make the change, would also include urination in public, would require, in addition to the fine, a $150 fee going to the state of Oklahoma and would require um, uh, <coughs> DNA testing. Oh, Lord. So, <coughs> I talked it over with the police department. That seems like an awful lot of money. Um, so, because the fine's $500, and then on top of all the costs, you would have a $150 charge, and they would be in this DNA database. So, if we put public urination in um, a different, in peace and order, and we added a lewd exposure, which is more than just urinating in the park. It's flashing or doing some, and, and, and there's actually, state law does make a difference between urination and lewd exposure. We just didn't. So if we, um, if we make a difference, then we don't have, if someone gets charged with uh, public urination, we don't have to charge the additional 150 dollars and we don't 
have to swab and send it into the DNA. And and to me that I, I don't I think they're two different things. So that's are, are why they using, are they using this DNA test to, to prove he actually urinated there or what? No. No, it's so that they can put it in their DNA bank and that if there's like a <laughs> case that happens in the future, then when they search DNA, that will be in the yeah. database of like fingerprints and now, that criminals get searched. We don't have to swab the people. I'm just trying to figure out what no one, that would be. No one, one forces it's us. Not. Here's the thing, and, and Kurt will find this humorous. We don't actually have to swab the people. Okay, they don't have. We don't have to do it. We but if pay. we don't do it, but we have to pay the hun They have to pay the hundred and fifty. If we don't do it, then if it happens a second time, they have to keep paying the hundred and fifty. So, to me, it sounds like a way of getting a hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. So, are we ready to go on to the next one? I don't know what yes, you guys please. want to do, but this is a proposal. Just one question on the yes. DNA part of it. Mm -hmm. Is this going to go to a federal um, agency? No. Yes. Now, it may go to a federal, but we're paying the 150 to the state, and it's the state DNA um, database. So it may database. Be the state's database. Yes. So now, it may, they probably share. Is there a lot of this? That's DNA? kind of crossing the line. Is there a lot of this data? Well, we're trying to stop that. Yeah, I mean, um, still, I mean, like second, or third offense, second or third offense, common sense has to play, come into play. Um, yeah, I don't think that there's a lot. Maybe common sense is but, right but, you know, uh, you know, we have, that is a charge that is common. But, no, it doesn't seem like people have, you know, uh, this is a... Um, it's a homeless issue, and it's a uh, 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 issue for young people mostly, I think, you know, because it involves alcohol, I think, for the most part, or homeless. But we don't have that many public bathrooms is one of the issues. I mean, if you think about being in our parks, our parks, bathrooms close and are locked um, for the winter. So, you know, it could happen to... Um, an older person, if they're walking their dog for a long period of time and don't realize the bathrooms are locked because of security and pipe issues. We winterize our... Okay. okay. Good. Great. Looks good. Like it. Okay. I have one just small. Yes. The Jocelyn. Is, this is, is it used frequently? Is this no. something? Okay. Okay. Is anything that we can just it's get rid of the job? Okay, system? here's the thing. Um, the reason why we still have it, <coughs> and um, the reason why I think that the amount should be about $100, is nobody gets charged by the police for Jocelyn. Who do they get charged by? Prosecutors sometimes amend down to Jocelyn. And here's from here's assault. The thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like I didn't really punch him in the face. I just jostled him a little. Like well, that. That guilty to jostling. okay. And see, here's the thing. Right. Um, on college applications and on military applications and stuff, no oh, one yeah. ever asks about jostling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it it sounds hilarious, but this is just a tool that I've uh, that I have retained so that if there's, you know, if for instance the presence the. Pr the the parents want a prosecution of their child. Some parents come in and say we, uh, they need to be prosecuted because they need to learn their lesson. This is a way of learning their lesson without having it follow them for the rest of their life. That's okay. fair. Okay. All right. There's no jousting, though, right? Just jostling. Just yeah. jostling. <laughs> It might be a bigger offense, you know, where you have a lot of crowds. Like in New York City, maybe jostling is still big, but not here. Okay. Yes. Okay, the next one is the one on drugs and um, low-point beer and, you know, which we, which they keep changing, and I know they're going to do away with it. Um, but they, they haven't yet. Who, oh, who is that? The state. The state. state. The we state has already said that it's going to be superseded, but they haven't told us how, how they're going to change it.
Is, okay. this, is this what they describe as a non-intoxicating beverage? Yeah, they used to. Not now. Huh? No. Not now. Ah. Okay, it used to be. When we were young, it was non-intoxicating. Now it's low point beer. Okay. Now, what we're the other thing that is somewhat controversial, unless you understand why we're doing it, is that we had marijuana, a violation of marijuana carried a 60-day imprisonment and an $800 fine. We're reducing that to $500 plus cost. Now it's not you know, because it's not serious. The reason is the um, police chief, um, uh, we, we envision that marijuana's uh, prosecutions are going to be more um, until, if it ever becomes legal, there'll be more of them. And they're going to be, most of them will be misdemeanors. So um, 500, so they have not been charging marijuana uh, with the city, but he's thinking that he might begin bringing the cases to the city if we do the $500 so we don't have to try them twice. You never want to try a drug case twice, and you have to do that if, um, uh, if it's appealed or jury or something like that. So, so, these, are, so these are simple possession? Simple possession. So possession of marijuana would be a city ticket instead of uh, going to county court? Well, maybe. it could be either. The police could decide, decide which, which court to go to. And we're reducing these it to 500 so we can handle them um, without a jury. And um, and we'll see if, if how many of them we get. Um, because right now, if nobody charges it as a city thing, because it would require a jury, and we don't do juries. Right. Or we would like not to do juries. Okay. Right. For the, great reasons. Mm -hmm. right. The other one is that they keep deciding they're going to do away with low point beer, but they don't, and they make changes to the. So this one does is required by state changes. They made a few changes to alcohol and low point beer, and so we've incorporated those changes in and we um, added in some additional language on the um, the uh, sniffing glue um, there's some differences uh, a few <coughs> sentences that have been added okay and then finally um, it was they keep changing the types of paraphernalia and so I just thought why not say instead of having three pages of types of paraphernalia just say okay it includes but is not limited to the types of paraphernalia listed so that we don't have to keep changing it and just listing the state statute reference the state statute yes. incorporate it yes um, okay those are the changes and if they look okay we'll put them on an agenda for passage Bring them back. It's good. Yep. That it? That's it. Now, you got not, you covered item six and seven. Yes. We are adjourned. We'll be upstairs at six thirty. Thank you for joining us for the Enid City Commission study session. If you have any questions or comments, visit our website at enid.org.